about curves, so that's section 10.1. Um, uh, so we are talking about parametrized curves. Uh, a very, very nice uh, way of thinking about a parametrized curve uh, uh, is by assuming that uh, you are thinking about the path of a moving object. Okay. So uh, yesterday we looked at an example of uh, example where we were given a definition of a curve and we had to come up with a plot of the curve and the orientation of the curve. And uh, let me recap the steps that we followed in order to do that. Step number one, eliminate the parameter t and come up with an equation involving x and y only. Hopefully you're going to recognize that equation as the graph of something. So you, then you know that the curve, uh, the parametrized curve is part of the graph of that equation. Okay. Once you know that, then you want to do calc 1 analysis of the component functions x and y and decide the orientation and, and, and what's the exact, and, and also know exactly what parts of the graph of the equation belongs to the curve. Okay. We're going to see some examples of that today again. So first example that I want to look at is, uh, is, uh, is this curve where uh, x is given to be cosine t, uh, y is given to be sine t, and t is between 0 and 2 pi. Is everybody okay? Now, what's the, what's, what curve is given, or what, uh, what is the plot of the curve, and, and uh, what's the orientation of the curve? So again, orientation means, if you think of this curve, uh, uh, if you think of the parameter t as time, and x and y are specifying the position of a moving object. You want to know how the object is moving, in what manner. And um, so in this case, uh, uh, first of all, the explanation is pretty easy. What's the, what's the gra uh, graph of this curve? Well, uh, if you think about this for a second, um, you will say that it should be the unique circle. Why? Well, th uh, I'm, we, I'm going to think about the parameter t as an angle. So if I think of the parameter t as an angle, and if I look at the unit circle, the terminal side of t will intersect the circle at a point, and that point has coordinates what? The coordinates of this point would be cosine t, comma sine t, and that's from the very definition of the trig function, right? Remember the, the very definition of the trig function would say that if you have the unique circle here, then, then uh, the uh, cosine of t would be the adjacent there, and the uh, sine t would be the, uh, would be the opposite there. And so those are exactly the coordinates of the intersection of the terminal side with the circle, right? So cosine t is the x-coordinate, sine t is the y-coordinate of that point. Is everybody okay with that? That's the very definition of trig functions. Uh, so now, t goes from 0 to 2 pi, so t goes over a full uh, revolution, right? So t goes from 0 to 2 pi, so uh, as t goes from 0 to 2 pi, we get all the points on the unit circle. Right? Is everybody okay? So I know that in this case I am getting the entire unit circle. So C is C is the entire uh, unit circle, uh, and uh, and what's the orientation? What's the orientation? Well, the orientation is clearly, orientation is clearly, this circle is being traced clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Counter 
Uh, is everybody okay with that? So in this case, I didn't have to do all that calculus analysis because it just follows from the very definition of sine and cosine. Right? Okay, now can someone tell me how this is going to change if I change the domain for t? Let's say I change the domain for t from 0 to pi only. So then what's the curve? Yeah, it's, so if I change, if I change the definition of c by changing the interval for t from 0 to pi, I am only going to get the upper half of the circle, but the same orientation, right? Now, one, one thing I want to emphasize here, now, um, one thing I want to emphasize here is that um, I could have done this problem by eliminating, eliminating, eliminating the parameter t, getting an equation involving x and y. How? Well, uh, notice that what is, what is x squared plus y squared? Uh, x is here is what? Cosine t, right? So I get cosine square t. And what is y? y is sine t. So I get sine squared of t. So then, what does it imply? It implies that x squared plus y squared is 1. And now we know that we recognize that equation as the equation of the unique circle. Right? Okay? Now notice uh, I could uh, I could do the same thing in my second problem, right? In my second problem, I could also say x squared plus y squared would be cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. So in both cases, now in in case number one, I get the unit circle equation. Case number two, I also get the unit circle e equation. But in the first one, I get the entire circle. In the second one, I don't get the entire circle, right? So my point is, just because I get the equation of a circle, doesn't mean the curve is the entire circle. All I know, by getting that equation for the circle, all I know, the curve is part of the circle. Is everybody okay? The curve is part of the circle, but I don't know if it is the entire, or half of it, or one quarter of it. It's going to depend on uh, how t, what's the domain for t. Okay? Now, um, Okay, so you, you have seen the second problem. Now let's look at the third one. I still have the same definition of the curve. Not the same, sorry. Uh, how, is, how is this different? Uh, in this curve, I, uh, I have the same interval for t, right? However, what did I change here? I, I changed the angle for sine and cosine. Instead of just t, I now have 2t. Is everybody okay? So how does it change the problem? Well, uh, I still have x squared plus y squared is cosine squared of 2t plus sine squared of 2t. This is still 1. Still 1, no matter what the angle is, still 1. Still one. So I still get the circle, I still get the circle, but what part of the circle? What's that? I, I get the whole thing again. But what's the difference then with the, between this one and the first one? Between this one and first one, what's the difference there? It's not wider because we still have the circle of radius 1. Radius is still 1. Yeah, but, 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 but what does it imply? Yeah, in terms of the curve, what does it mean? I think you are on the right track. I just want you to say the right, right words. Yeah, both are on twice. That is, if you think of both examples as as the uh, path of a moving object, right? In the first example, the object is moving only once over the time from zero to two pi. In the in this problem, uh, the object is going to move twice over the same time interval. Sense. Why? Because uh, uh, because in this problem, notice that t uh, t is uh, t is between zero. So t is between zero and two pi. 
So what does it tell you about 2t? Well then 2t, 2t would be between 0 and 4 pi. Uh, are we okay with that? So 2t would be between 0 and 4 pi, right? And so the angle for sine and cosine is going from 0 to 4 pi, not 0 to 2 pi, right? The angle 2t goes from 0 to 4 pi, and you're evaluating sine and cosine there, so you are actually making two revolutions. Is everybody okay? Are we okay with that? All right. Um, I am going to uh, delete this for a second because I need a fresher picture here. Um, okay, so let's say now let's look at the uh, again the orientation in the last example was uh, uh, clock uh, counterclockwise. Now I'm going to look at the third problem here. Uh, x is sine t, uh, y is uh, cosine t, uh, t is between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, what, how is it different from the first problem? What's that? X and Y, the definition for X and Y are switched, right? Now X is sine, not cosine. Uh, what would be the what would be the what it would be this curve? Well, once again, let's check what is x squared. What is x squared plus what is x squared plus y squared? Uh, it'll be it'll be sine squared t plus cosine squared of t, which is still one. So I still know that the uh, graph of this curve is still going to be part of the circle. Do I get the entire circle? And also, what's the orientation of the circle? So let's first make a, make a circle, since we know that we are going to get a circle. And... Okay, and... Um, Okay, so we got the, it's still the unit circle, so the, the radius is still one. Um, now, can someone tell me, do, am I, am I going to get the entire circle? If I, if I do, what's the orientation? It's clockwise and it's the uh, entire circle. Let's see why. Let's an analyze this. Uh, let's look at, at t equals to zero. Where, where am I? So let's think of this as the position of a moving ob object. At time zero, what's the position? At time zero, what's the position of the object? So at time zero, what is x? At zero, at t equals to zero, what is x? So notice that when t is zero, t is zero, x would be zero. When t is zero, x would be zero. And what would be the y value when t is zero? When t is 0, what is y? 1, right? Cosine 0 is 1. So where am I at then? I am right at the north pole, right? So this is the point 0, 1. And at, at t equals to 0, this is where I am at. At t equals to 0, this is where I, I am at. Now let's see what's happening as you go from 0 to pi over 2. So as, uh, as t progresses from 0 to pi over 2, what is happening to x? As t progresses from 0 to pi over 2, when, when uh, t is pi over 2, what's the x value? When t is pi over 2, x value is 1. So I know that as t progresses from 0 to pi over 2, x progresses from 0 to 1, right? x progresses from 0 to 1. Uh, at pi over 2, where, uh, where is the point? Uh, what's the position at pi over 2? 
At pi over 2, we know that x is 0. And if you look at the y value, sorry, not x, uh, x is 1. x is 1, and the y value is 0. So at pi over 2, I am at 1, 0. At pi over 2, I am at 1, 0. So what's happening is that I am moving in the clockwise direction from that point to that point. Now, let's think about what's happening as uh, t progresses from pi over 2 to pi. As t progresses from pi over 2 to pi, um, the x value now decreases to 0, right? So if x value, right now, x at pi over 2, x value is 1, I'm saying now x value goes to 0, right? So that means at uh, at pi, at t equals to pi, I am at the south pole, right? Is everybody okay? So now I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, in the uh, clockwise direction. So here, x is zero, y is one. Now, yeah, I'm just, I'm just showing you, you're gonna get the entire circle by just going through this argument. Now, as, uh, as, as t progresses from pi to 3 pi over 2, right? As t progresses from pi to 3 pi over 2, the x value now decreases from 0 to negative 1. x value decreases from 0 to negative 1. So, that means that you are coming to, at t equals to 3 pi over 2, you are at... Uh, at the uh, left, the most left point of the circle here, and um, and then you're still moving in the clockwise direction. And finally, as t progresses from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, uh, you are coming back to the same point that you started with. So it means that you've got the entire circle, and you, uh, you uh, traced it uh, uh, clockwise. Is that okay? Question. All right. Um, next problem. Um, this time I have a curve C where x is sine t, y is a sine squared t. Why don't you take a second and see if you can uh, come up with the, with the curve. Let me give you a minute and see if you can come up with the curve. At least, at least come up with the shape of the curve. Anybody recognizes the curve? Parabola? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, in this case, I cannot get away without... Uh, uh, the only thing I could do is get rid of the parameter, come up with an equation in x and y. Because uh, I cannot say that it's a very definition of sine and cosine. 
Here, uh, what can I, uh, how can I eliminate the, uh, eliminate parameter t, and what equation can come up, can I come up with, in x and y? What do you get? Did you guys get an equation? What is that? An um, equation involving x and y. Very good. So you you started with y. And y is sine squared of t. We know that that means that this is sine t uh, squared, which means that it is uh, x squared, right? So uh, what we know then is that we got y to be x squared, and that's a that's the uh, that's the parabola. So let's draw. Let's uh, draw the parabola. If I can draw it, I guess. Okay, um, I can try and draw it, but um, Okay, I, got, I, I know that my curve is part of the parabola. Now I need to know, is it the entire parabola? Right? Uh, is the curve in the entire parabola? And if I know that, then what's the orientation? Okay? So how would you decide that? How would you decide that? Can anyone decide what the curve is exactly? Is it the entire parabola? Is it some parts of the parabola? Hmm? Ne negative, negative one to one? Yeah. Uh, y is from zero to one. Right. Yeah. So what he's saying is that the curve C would be only this part only this part where this is 1 this is negative 1 and the height here is 1 yeah I'm yeah so uh, so let's think about this for a second why is he saying that this is only the part well let's think about X what is X X is sine T now no matter what t is, can you give me an upper bound for sine t? Can you give me an upper bound for sine t? 1. Can you give me a lower bound for sine t? Negative 1. So I know that no matter how big, how small t is, x is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. Right away that tells me that the curve is not the entire parabola. Because for the entire parabola, x could be anything. Right? Uh, what's happening to y? y is sine squared t. What's the largest value of that? 1. What's the smallest value of that? 0, because sine squared is non-negative. So then I see that I get exactly the pink portion of the of the parabola. Now let's think about the uh, orientation. Uh, let's just think about uh, positive t. So let's say, uh, let's figure out w w uh, what point do I get at t equals to zero. So when t is zero, what point do I get? When t is zero, x is zero, y is zero. So right at, right, this is the point that I get at t equals to zero. Now, what point do I get at pi over 2? When t is pi over 2, what point do I get? This point here. This is when I get it. This point is obtained at pi over 2. 
Now notice that uh, as t progresses from 0 to pi over 2, x is progressing from 0 to 1. So that means you are moving in what direction? You're mo moving in this direction, right? From that. Now, now as t progresses from pi over 2 to pi, what's happening? Wh where are you at at pi? When t is pi, aren't you back at the origin? So that means as t progresses from pi over 2 to pi, you are coming back to the origin. Now where are you at uh, 3 pi over 2? At 3 pi over 2, you are at x is negative 1, y is 1 again. So that means you are, you are progressing upward from pi to 3 pi over 2. Right? And then when, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, you're going to come back. You're going to come back to uh, the origin again. So what's going on here? Well, if you think of this as the position of a moving object, the object is, uh, has a periodic motion, right? Going back and forth, back and forth like a pendulum. Right? Yeah, so think about the path of a pendulum, right? So let's say that what the object is the pendulum. It's going back and forth. Right? Is that okay? What were you saying again? No. Okay. Yeah, so the orientation would be that it's going back and forth. So uh, for the orientation, I would probably just do those arrows and say that one arrow going like this, the other arrow is going like this. So it's going back and forth. Uh, any questions? Okay, uh, if you now look at this example, I have a, I have a curve C where x is h plus r cosine theta, y is k plus r sine theta, t is between 0 and 2 pi. Now here, h, k, and r are constants, okay? Uh, h, k, r are constants. Uh, what's the graph of this curve? And I guess my picture there gives it away, gives it away. Uh, why is it a circle of radius r centered at h, k? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So okay. So basically, if you look at the first equation, you can say x minus h is r cosine t, and if you if you look at y minus k, that's r sine t. And then if you look at x minus h squared, you get r squared cosine squared t. If you look at y minus k squared, you get r squared sine squared t. And then if I add x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, I would be getting r squared cosine squared t plus r squared sine squared of t. And I can factor out r squared. I would be getting cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t. And so I would be getting x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals to r squared. So, and we recognize that, the, that 
as the this equation is the equation of the circle of radius r centered at hk okay and because t goes from 0 to 2 pi I know that I'm going to get the entire circle and it is going to be positively oriented meaning its uh, orientation is counterclockwise okay now if you are not sure about why the orientation is counterclockwise think about the following when when t is 0 which point are you at when t is 0 what is x go ahead when t is 0 you get h plus r would be x what is the point h plus r on my circle what is the point h plus r h h is the distance of this point right h so h plus the radius will be this point and k is the height, right? k is the height. So I know that at t equals to 0, this is where I am at. Right? When t is 0, t is 0, you get h plus r. When t is 0 here, you get k. So the point is h plus r k. Right? And at t equals to 0, what's the, what's the x coordinate of this point? Uh, notice that the x coordinate of the center, the x coordinate of the center is h, so that's the distance from here to here. And what distance is here? That's the radius, right? So, so what is this point here? This point here then is uh, h plus r. Is everybody okay? And then, of course, the height is k, right? The height is k because that's the height of the center. So I get this point here is uh, h plus r comma k. Okay, same way I can figure out what's the, what point do I get when k, uh, t is pi over 2. When t is pi over 2, you get the north pole again, right here. What would be that? What's the x coordinate? h and what's the y coordinate k plus r very good and so you can see you're going counterclockwise and at uh, t equals to 3 pi over 2 you're going to be at the left end point and at, at uh, t equals to uh, uh, sorry pi you'll be there at 3 pi over 2 you'll be at the south pole and then 2 pi you come back to the same point right okay um, now I am asking you a different question. Now I am giving you a graph of a curve and I am asking you to come up with parametric equations for that curve. Did my question make sense? I want you to express the graph of the function f of x. f of x is 2x. Uh, I am asking you to express the graph of the function 2x parametrically. That is, I want you to come up with a parametric curve C whose graph would be the line. Am I making sense? But what's the graph of two what's the graph of 2x? The graph of 2x is a straight line. And what I want you to do is I want you to give me a curve, give me a give me a curve C where you have to define what X is you have to define what, what Y is in terms of a parameter T and then you have to tell me what is the interval of T that is I want you to imagine this that this is the path of a moving object imagine that this straight line is the path of a moving object and I want you to give me its a position function Right? At any time, what's the position? Am I making sense? Give me the position of a moving object moving along this line. That's the, that's a, that's the question that I'm asking. So what can I pick x to be? Very good. If I pick x to be t, what is y? 2t. 
Notice that if x is t, y is 2t, together it means y is twice of x, right? y is twice of x. So I know that now, what should, what should, what should be the interval for t? Yeah, so notice that x is t, I know that for the line, x is going from negative infinity to positive infinity, so x could be anything, so I, I need t to be anything as well. Because x is going from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is one possible, this is one, this is one possible, uh, uh, this is a one possible, let me call that c, uh, let me call that c1, okay? Um, let me call that C1. Okay, so this is one possible parameterization of the curve. Is that the only parameterization of this uh, straight line? How do I know there are many more parameterizations of the, there are many more parameterizations of the same line? Well, okay, imagine that, imagine you're thinking about the line being the path of the moving object, right? Now imagine that the path is the moving the moving object is an ant, right? Versus the moving object being a car. Will will the parameterization for the car and will the motion for the car and the ant be the same? So the parameterizations for the two would be the same even though they have the same path, right? Am I making sense? So you have you have more pa more parameterizations. Give me another one. Very good. C1, if, x, if I take x to be negative t, uh, y would be a negative t, uh, 2t. No, sorry. Um, yeah, negative 2t, yes. Um, then I get, then y is twice, twice of x. And again, still I need t to be in this interval. Right? What's the difference between, oh, I should call that C2. Uh, what's the difference between the two? The only difference is the orientation, right? In the first case, uh, what's the orientation? In the first case, the orientation is going up. In the second case, the orientation is going down, right? Okay, someone else give me another parameterization. 2t and 4t, very good. So if, uh, uh, let me call that c3. x is 2t, y is uh, 4t, and again t would be where? Negative infinity to positive infinity, right? What's the difference now? Well, it, it's, it's just that it is a little bit faster moving object, right? Um, let me give you a little bit more complicated parameterization. I claim that if I take if I take C4, I'm going to take x to be ln of t, and I'm going to take y to be 2 ln of t. And here, I, I need t to be greater than 0. Am I getting the entire line? I am. Remember, what's the range for L what's the domain of ln of t? This. What's the range of ln of t? Everything, right? So I'm going to get x to be anything, and then I'm going to get y to be anything as well. So this is another possibility. Now, this is a very slow, right? ln of t is much slower than t ln of t function is smaller than the function t. Right? ln of t is a, is a slower growing function than t or t squared, any power of t. Any power of t is bigger than ln. So uh, this is a possibility. Let me just give you one more, uh, just for the fun. Uh, let's say x is uh, let's say x is um, uh, t times sine t. t times sine t. And y is 2 times t times sine t. 
Now what's happening? Uh, what is the orientation in the C4? The orientation is, as t goes to z from 0 to infinity, x is going from negative infinity to positive infinity, so the orientation is upward. But what's the orientation in the fifth case? Yeah, the, uh, the, the orientation in the fifth case is much more interesting because a sine t is a periodic thing there, it could be positive and negative. So think about what's happening at time zero. At, times on, um, at time zero, you are at the origin, right? Yeah. At time zero, you're at the origin. As you go from zero to pi, uh, zero to pi, x remains positive, right? And then as you go from, uh, as you go from pi to even, even big, then sine becomes negative, then you're going, x is going to be negative. Am I making sense? So what's happening? Let me just uh, let me just say something here. Um, at so this is the fifth case. Okay, C five. In the fifth case, at time zero, I'm right here. T equals to zero. Where am I at? At t equals to pi over two. At t equals to pi over two, what is sine pi over two? One. So t is pi over two there. So x would be, so let's say here is, uh, here is pi over 2. Here is pi over 2x, so I'm going to be say let, right at this point, at pi over 2. W where am I at? At, uh, at pi. At pi, sine is 0 again. So first of all, I'm going upward like this, from 0 to pi over 2, and then from pi over 2 to pi, I'm coming back to 0, right? Am I making sense? You guys are okay with that? And then what is happening after pi over 2? After, uh, after pi. After pi, uh, so you're coming back here at pi. After pi, sine becomes negative, so you start to get negative values of x. That means you're moving in the, this direction, right? Until you get to where? You get to uh, uh, 3 pi over 2. So. At some point, you get to uh, 3 pi over 2, maybe it's somewhere here, okay, 3 pi over 2, and then you're going to go up again. So what's happening? Go up, and then go down a lot, and then go up even more, right? And then go up, go down even more, right? So each time it goes up, it goes up more. The next time, next time it's going to go up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go beyond this point, right? Am I making sense? Next time it, it goes up, it's going to go up beyond this point. And then when it comes down, it's going to come down even more. And when it goes up again, it's going to go up even more. So it's going to go, keep going back and forth, but each time, it's going to go bigger and bigger. It's going to go, uh, it's going to cover more and more segment of the line. Am I making sense? All right, so, so depending on what type of motion you're trying to model, right, you're going to use one or the other, okay? All right. Um, uh, I had one more or two more, okay, I had two more, but we'll finish it next time.